The gathering hymn is song number 558. Five, five, eight. And we will sing verses one, two, and four. Once again, hymn number five, five, eight. And to preserve the sacredness of today's liturgy, please remember to silence or turn off your cell phones. Thank you.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Set firing on earth here. The Lord Jesus is telling us that that fire should be a blazing. A fire that would make us united, but a unity that would come also from a division where he has to make a decision as a God, as our Father is willing also that he would unite all of us, but he would like us to follow him, to trust him, and to witness his love in this world. And for those who do the opposite, then there's that division where God himself would be the one to choose for us who love for the many times that we are not the witness of Christ's love for others or had caused the division ourselves, we ask God for his pardon, for his full of gentleness and compassion. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault and through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Excelsis Deo. God who had prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see. Fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. In those days, the princes said to the king, Jeremiah ought to be put to death. He is demoralizing the soldiers who are left in this city and all the people by speaking such things to them. He is not interested in the welfare of our people, but in their ruin. King Zedekiah answered, He is in your power, for the king could do nothing with them. And so they took Jeremiah and threw him into the cistern of Prince Melchiah, which was in the quarters of the guard, letting him down the ropes. There was no water in the cistern, only mud, and Jeremiah sank in the mud. Ebe Melech, a court official, went there from the palace and said to him, My lord king, these men have been at fault, and all they do have done to the prophet Jeremiah, casting him into the cistern. He will die of famine on the spot, for there is no more food in the city. Then the king ordered Ebe Melech, the Cushite, to take three men along with him and draw the prophet Jeremiah out of the cistern before he should die. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us rid ourselves of every burden and sin that clings to us and persevere in running the race that lies before us while keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, the leader and perfecter of faith. For the sake of the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross, despising its shame, and has taken his seat at the right of the throne of God. Consider how he endured such opposition from sinners, in order that you may not grow weary and lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, I have come to set the fire on earth, and how I wish it were already blazing. There is a baptism with which I must be baptized, and how great is my anguish until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to establish peace on the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, a household of five will be divided, three against two and two against three. A father will be divided against his son and a son against his father, a mother against her daughter and a daughter against her mother a mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The Gospel of the Lord. For many of us, we would be wondering if God is the God of unity, the God of peace. And why is the Lord here, Jesus, who is God, the Son of the living God, the Father, saying us here, I have not come here to have peace, but to have division. Something that many of us would be wondering, why would Jesus talk like this? But of course, he is talking here about the division that humanity is actually doing, and humanity is still invited by our Lord, be reminded that we are all, first and foremost, created in the image and likeness of God. But even though we are created in the image and likeness of God, we have the freedom, a freedom of the free will, the free will that could always choose what is good and what is bad. And God would respect that freedom, the freedom that is given to each and every one of us through birth, and then in baptism is confirmed by our Lord that he is giving us that freedom. Some even after their baptism would not like to be called baptized anymore. And that's their freedom. Even though they were baptized and they were called Christians, men and women of faith, persons of faith, children of faith, but they don't want to be called 
Christians or followers of Christ, God is respecting that. And therefore, there would be a normal cause, a natural cause of division. So we don't think here division like we are just divided by our Lord so that we do not talk or we are never united. No, the Lord is telling us here that we are the ones who would cause this division and He would respect that division if we want that. So where's that division coming from? Of course, there would be many things that we can talk about this division. But in simple ways, we can just say there is the problem of the good versus the evil. Where the good is from our God, who is supreme good, and the evil, which actually came from God also. But because of their disobedience, Satan and Lucifer, with all the other angels that had fallen, became the evil spirit. Satan is leading then the bad. And so there is a cause of that division where the Lord is reminding us again to think about where are we aligned? Where are we loyal to? Many of us were wondering why we could not park in our parking lot. And I'm sorry that it had been announced for one month already and we had to postpone always. Now, finally, this weekend, yesterday, they started to repave and put some asphalt in our parking lot. For two years, we could not do that because of COVID. But now they were able to do it. And today, they are striping it. These guys do a lot. When I was looking at them, and I, and I, I had to ask his name, what's your name? Because you're doing a good job. I told him right away so that he, he, would, he, would, he might be thinking that, oh, am I in trouble now? Yeah, he's, he's Joe, Joe Neg Negro. Ne Joe Negro. And Joe told me that he had been in this company, which is the American Asphalt Company, for 17 years. And it took him many, many years to be able to perfect, to stripe, to stripe. And you cannot be wrong. You have to be almost perfect. So if you see there, he has that paint. And with a machine, he has to make the lines for the basketball court, the volleyball court. And then I put there a little bit of, oh, I want that three-point shot. The three-point shot in the basketball court, colored gold, which is actually our color for St. Gregory, maroon and gold. But since maroon is too dull, so we put gold. And he said, oh, wow, you really, really, you really like your basketball here, Father. No, 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 I like, I, like, I like what you're doing. Because he is really, he has to do that alignment in a very perfect way. And I told him, Joe, I would talk about you in my homily. Can you? Can you, can you allow me? And I said, I said to him, not for, not for anything, but alignment. Alignment that we have to be almost perfect, just as the heavenly Father is perfect. But he is not asking us to be perfect either. He is just asking us to be aligned in him, that even though we could have some faults and we could have some wrongs, but still aligned in him. Because what is the opposite of that? We have to accept that there are many, and I'm glad that they are not here. I could probably say 100% that they are not here. They are not in the pews. But they are outside and they are, our still, are still our brothers and sisters. Because if they are created in the image and likeness of God, they are our brothers and sisters. It may not be our brothers and sisters in faith, but with one God, the Father, they are. But they align themselves to the evil spirit. They even have a religion. Even in San Francisco, there's a religion of Satan. And... I, I'm not surprised because people come here every now and then asking me about these things. And there was even a question about this fastest growing business in the Bay Area. And I could imagine it's not only in the Bay Area, but in many parts of the world. This psychic reading, tarot reading, palm reading, or 
people who say that they can see your future and they can foretell your future. The only answer to that in a Christian way is to say, just like our second reading is telling us and the responsorial psalm is telling us, that our trust should be with the Lord always. And the second reading, the letter to the Hebrews, is telling us that the Lord Jesus is the leader and the perfecter of our faith. And so our alignment should only with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Other than that, you are aligning yourself to the evil spirit. And unfortunately, some of our brothers and sisters created an image like of God, likeness of God. They align themselves to the evil spirit. They are there doing some business. And they have prayers too like this. But instead of invoking our Father in heaven or Jesus, they invoke Satan. They invoke Lucifer and all the devils that could be very powerful also. And they could be, they could be influential. One of the things that they would do, as some of you might be able to hear that, and I hear that from many people who had been into that experience, where they go to a business like tarot reading or psychic reading, and this psychic would always tell them good things. Like if you are from St. Gregory and you are an 11.30 mass goer, or you are driving this kind of car, or if you are late, or you are always on time at Mass, they can tell you that right away to impress you, where you would say, oh, this psychic knows me. This psychic knows where I go to Mass, St. Gregory, that 11.30 Mass, I go to that, and I drive this car, and that I'm not always late. And you could be impressed of that. Now, I would say, if you could be impressed of that and would trust his other words by saying, oh, your future is like this. Don't believe in that. Because Satan, the devil, could never tell your future. He can tell you what's going on with you right now or your past. Like you're an 1130 mass goer, he can do that. Sometimes they always, they would just go to Google and they would say, type your name and they would be able to get your bio and some background about you. But also in non-Google ways, they pray to the devil and ask the devil to give them some background about this person, to impress this person. But actually they can't tell the future. But since we are impressed already of saying of him saying or the psychic saying to us that you are this one you are as 11:30 mass goer and as if he knows you already then we trust his words by telling us what is our future and many of them 99.99 percent they say they can't foretell the future simply because if they can foretell the future there could be or the one billion lottery last two weeks ago. There must be some St. Gregory parishioners already who had known that. If these psychic readers can tell the future and can tell what is the future number of a lottery. Because only God really knows what is our future. And therefore, he is telling us here to be aligned with him, to be always be attuned in him, even though we want security, we want to be established with our lives. To put God as our leader and to put God always as the one who would guide us for the future. Not the evil spirit, not Satan, not Lucifer. And that is the one that we are combating against in this world. And that's why the Lord is telling us there is a division. Unfortunately, there is a division. And this division is natural. And this division has to be made because I don't want you, men and women of faith, persons of faith, to be affected by those who do not have faith. Or I don't want you to be affected by those who adhere themselves 
to the evil spirit. And so he has to deliver that division. And so for us, my dear brothers and sisters, as we come here into this Mass, we are here because we are aligned with our Lord Jesus. And I am glad that you are here, and we want Jesus to be our leader and to be the promoter of our faith. Like the psalmist, we say, I trust in the Lord. And even in good times and in the bad times of our lives, in sickness or in health, just like Joe there or Adrian in the asphalt company, it's hard to be aligned. It takes so much time. It takes so much discipline. It is for us also, it takes so much discipline to be aligned with God, and that's why we are here at this Eucharist to pray with our Lord Jesus to be able to battle against the evil spirit because it is only in that that we could always be aligned in our Lord Jesus. Amen. Trusting in the Lord, trusting in Him, aligning ourselves to Him, we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. To Him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With trust in the presence of God's Holy Spirit in the world and in our lives, we turn to the Lord in prayer. For our church, may our leaders be faithful to the justice and peace teachings of Jesus, offering hope and blessing in our troubled world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, that they will work together to end violence and bring life, peace, and real security to the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world. May we be inspired to share in the griefs, anxieties, joys, and hopes of all God's people and all creation, speaking up to challenge suffering, death, and destruction. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For parents and teachers, may we teach our children to be bridge builders, tackling differences and tensions with love and compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, especially John Barry Riley and Joan Monjovi, may they be treated with dignity, patience, and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Shondi Thompson Bonner, Fidelia Huarta, Elias Bado, Enrique Dick Alamario, and those who have no one to pray for them, that they will find welcome and rest in God's heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of Silvano and Philip Muslim, for whom this Mass is being offered, and a special birthday blessing for Giovanni. Bon Martini, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers that we carry in our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. And we include also in our prayers the souls of Patrick McDowd and Dr. Louis Taylor, and those who have died from our own families and our parish, and for those who may be asking prayers from us because they are not remembered anymore, there are no families remaining in this world anymore. We lift these prayers to the intercession of our Blessed Mother, the Queen of all saints, the Queen always trusting in the Lord. And so we say to her, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. There's one announcement. Monday, August 15th, Feast of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary is not a holy day of obligation, according to the guidelines of the Diocese of San, San Francisco. Mass will be at the normal time of noon. And together, let us sing hymn number 466. 466. Pray now, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours would become acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Amen. 
Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and ever to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, eternal God. For you lay the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You form man in your own image, aligning him to you, and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder, to rule in your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ. With all the angels, we praise you, Lord, as we now acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift to pray, by sending us your spirit upon them like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Salvatore, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. We pray for world peace. And we pray also for those who are traveling. We pray for families who are coming back from their summer vacation as we start our school year 2022-2023 on August 22nd. We pray also for our departed brothers and sisters, most especially Philip and Silvano Maslum. We pray for the soul of Patrick McDowd and Dr. Louis Taylor. And all those who have died from our parish, from our families, and those who may be forgotten, welcome them, Lord, into the light of your face. Have mercy in us, O Lord, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, all the apostles, with Gregory the Great, our patron, and all the saints who had pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Realigning ourselves to the one Father in heaven who had always been loyal to us. And we trust Him and we should be trusting also to Him. Through our Lord Jesus' words, let us say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ said to the apostles, Peace I live you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on our faith in you, our trust, and our belief in you and the sacraments and your mystical body, the church. And grant us the peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Behold Jesus, behold him, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, who would want us to be with him to the Father. Happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, and not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word that my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Amen.
Let us sing hymn number 366. 366.
Jesus, my Lord, my God, my all, how can I love thee as my heart, and how give thee this wondrous gift, so far surpassing hope or thought, sweet sacrament we thee adore, O oh, make us love thee more and more, O oh, make us love thee more and more, sweet sacrament we thee adore, Oh, make us love thee more and more. Oh, make us love thee more and more. Let us pray.
made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conform to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I thank you all for coming here to celebrate with us as secrets and valued guests. Thank you so much for coming here and visiting us here at St. Gregory. You're always welcome here at St. Gregory. I want to thank you also for continued support here at St. Gregory. I want to thank also Chris and John Paul, our altar servers. They are actually freshmen in high school. They graduated already here at St. Gregory. But I, so I want to thank them especially because there aren't many high schoolers who would still like to be altar servers. Not that I would be discouraging you, but I want to encourage you to come here, come back here. So you're very welcome. Give them a big hand. Yeah. These are high schoolers. They will be starting already next Wednesday. Um, Sarah is uh, as starting next Wednesday. Um, also, he'll stay. will be starting also ne next Wednesday. So I, I wish you all the best, high school, um, high school kids, and some of our college students also are going back to their colleges. I want to thank also our choir for, for the first time that we have a choir in this pandemic. Thank you so much. Since I saw and I heard, I witnessed their performance, I am proud to present them. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you did not, probably I would not. I would just thank you in general. But uh, <laughs> you are, you did great. You did so great that you, uh, you help us in our prayers, help us in our devotion also into the Eucharist. I want to introduce them as they are from many parts of the Bay Area. It pays to go to many places. Um, based to go to many churches. So this is a combined choir, friends, that, who are very generous with their time coming here, visiting me here at St. Gregory. They are a combined choir from St. Bede's in Hayward, Immaculate Conception in Brentwood. Brentwood, oh. For some of you who don't know Brentwood, it's a beautiful, beautiful city, the cherry capital of California and therefore of the world, right? Yeah, for cherry picking. It's done already. It's St. Matthew and uh, I want, and St. Gregory also, uh, friends. It's hard to combine a choir because it has to, it has to be done with a rehearsal. So I want to thank in a very special way, um, Percy Toots Perles, who is conducting them and Putting this together, including all our musicians, instrumentalists, thank you so much. I want to, um, there's a cellist, there's a cellist, and uh, there's the, the, the little girl who was our psalmist, uh, Monica. Mon Monica. Monica? Her name is, her name is? Maddie. Maddie, huh? Maddie. Maddie. You are a future future cantor of St. Gregory. <laughs> yeah, already cantoring here. But um, to them, they will be here uh, once a month. Um, so I'm, I'm glad to, um, to be visited by, by you. I'm so honored. Thank you so much. And of course, I want to thank all our ushers, all our read readers, Eucharistic minister, and uh, Marvin Sanchez, who continues to live stream for our valued parishioners, or many, many who live stream with us. Thank you so much, Marvin, for continuing this. I, I am in need of something. I am very, I'm very big in sports. And although I could be biased with basketball, but I need volleyball coaches. Um, if you are a volleyball coach and you can volunteer, unfortunately, it's just a volunteer job. Um, I've, been, I've been looking around and I've been picking uh, coaches, um, especially students 
or former students of St. Gregory who were good volleyball players and good role models for our children. So I'm in need of coaches. If you can teach uh, not only to play volleyball, but for our children to grow in love and wisdom or in devotion to God and to the church, please contact me because I'm in need of coaches. I need head, two head coaches for the fifth grade and eighth grade team in our volley for the volleyball season, which starts August 23rd. They are practicing, but they won't start their official games in September. So we still have time. If you are uh, an avid, uh, avid sports fan and a supporter of kids' sports, please let me know. I might need you for other sports. I might need you also for the basketball season. That's my, that's my advice because I could coach for basketball. For volleyball, I can't. I, but I, I want to thank all those who had volunteered already their time. Some of them said no um, because of their time schedule, but um, they are willing to help. But I, I understand. But for us here, we are a parish and we want our children to grow, not only to be big in sports. And I know that we have some big names from our parish. Uh, we may have a next Tom Brady or again, or a Nick, next, Nick Vanos again, by training our kids, and they could be in the, uh, in, a, in the next level of sports. But they all started when they were kids. They, we trained them and we coached them. The Lord be with you. And may the Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Have a good week. Together, let us sing hymn number 393. 393. Volleyball coach?